this uh, workshop about very important things like connectivity in a, in a huge region of, uh, I would say, Asia, but it's Asia and Europe. And um, I would like to thank the panelists that are with us this morning and with you, our audience. And um, also, I would like to thank the Indonesian host that has given us the opportunity to, to host this interesting um, big meeting in a beautiful venue and uh, with nice food and uh, great hospitality. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, our panelists. Uh, I would give the floor to them so they can tell uh, their names and affiliations. And then I think uh, Mariman will start with the first um, uh, presentation. So I, I will start to my left. Matik, would you present yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Matik. So uh, my name is Vasif. I'm Marav. I'm working with the so UNDPC of Azerbaijan and the Minister of ICT who is joining projects as well. I am a little bit that are you, we are uh, neighbors to Azerbaijan and very good friends, so I'm very happy to be here. My name is Olga Cavalli, I, am, uh, I work for the government of Argentina and I am a university teacher. We are not neighbors of Azerbaijan, there is a long distance in between the two countries, but that doesn't mean we are not uh, very good friends in between our countries, so I'm very happy to be here and glad for the invitation. And I was so happy to be in Baku last year for the IGF. My name is Nariman Hadjiev. Uh, I work for the United Nations Country Office in Azerbaijan. So, uh, Nariman, would you start with a presentation or uh, Hadik? You start? Okay. Uh, I would like to offer uh, all your words. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank all of you for coming. And then I would like to also thank our participants, as well as the government of Indonesia for providing such a, let me say, unique atmosphere for the proper conduction of this forum. And it's my great pleasure of honor today to deliver remarks on behalf of the, our republic uh, this forum will focus on the topic of the bridging, future bridge, uh, for the elimination of the digital divide within the term, uh, trans eurasian region. Uh, being, uh, be, being both a consequence and the cause of the rapid globalization process, uh, as we know, information and communication technologies have brought about considerable uh, changes throughout the world and forced to revive the traditional development uh, of paradigm. The emergence of such notions as the ICT and information society and knowledge economy manifests such change. The, the inadequate telecommunication infrastructure is not one of the main causes of digital divide. Without access to internet, uh, for instance, no internet-based services can be generated and used. For example, the broadband trends that reflect the access to the high-speed internet are alarming when measured the impact reach the third. And that's why the IQ argues that despite the substantial growth in price by approximately 52% for the fixed broadband connection in developing countries, and ICT services continue to be more affordable in high-income economies and less affordable in low economies. Thus, the digital divide refers to the divide between those who can benefit from the digital technology and those who can't reach obviously throughout the trans eurasian region. Accordingly, to the concept of the digital divide can be explained from the two perspectives. Uh, the first thing that we think that the existing divide between those countries that have ample access to e electronic research information and those don't have. And the second thing uh, as a perspective is the difference in internet literacy and the aptitude between the citizens of developed versus and underdeveloped countries. Now I would like to present a number of the slides illustrating that what divides Eurasia from more developed countries. 
In this slide, uh, we could see the digital, bit, uh, digital di divide. The source of this, uh, of this, let me say, the slide is the United Nations uh, e-government survey. And in the next slide, we could see the again digital divide in terms of the e-government and online services index. Again, the source of that, let me say, the figures is the United Nations e-government report survey. And the last slide uh, about the digital divide, there is a potential to overcome divide. Uh, it shows from the select, the randomly selected countries in terms of human capital index. What is uh, trans the Asian super information highway and what is Europa? For these reasons, the Republic of Azerbaijan proposed a very interesting international project which called trans eurasian Information Superhighway to undertake the effort of bridging the digital divide between European and Asian countries and establishment uh, as a third, uh, which was reflected in the third resolution of the United Nations General Assembly. And it was advised to establish the Euro Eurasian Connectivity Alliance, which we used to call Europa. Accordingly, this project aims to lay transitional fiber, transnational fiber optic line converting, covering the countries of Eurasia from Western Europe to Eastern Asia. And uh, please kindly have a look at the initial map of the Euroca, which is covers uh, the Europe and the Asia at all. And the, what, what are the major benefits of this project? The establishment of the Europa will play an important role in improving coordination between the governments, private sector, civil society, and international development organizations for the development of ICT sector. It will also combine the major centers of information exchange in Europe and Asia. It will also uh, could contribute to create open information society in the region, increase the speed of internet connection, and the development of internet services. As well as we could, uh, it will ensure coordination of synergies and activities, cooperation, effective use, and experience and resources existing in the member countries to contribute to the implementation of the goals. Here, uh, what is the mobilizing global and the UN support? On December 21st, the first resolution was adopted uh, in the, uh, on the United Nations General Assembly for the creation of the superhighway. The, the, resolution, uh, the resolution supported approximately more than uh, 30 countries. The next resolution, after passing the three years, the next resolution was adopted, and the last resolution on the establishment of Eurasia Connectivity Alliance was adopted in September, and it was <coughs> sorry uh, in this and uh, adopted by the and support proposed to establishment of the Eurasian Connectivity Alliance with the International Telecommunication Union and as well as to improve the development of the regional telecommunication transit routes. What about the funding of the, this project? The center funding will come to contribution made by the alliance members that will be building national passing national segments, as well as voluntary contribution made by other stakeholders. But so far, the Secretariat is funded, are fully funded by the government of Azerbaijan. Uh, the proposed scope of the Euroca is four main directions, as we see from this slide. The first one is the infrastructure maintenance, uh, which is also include the service procurement management of commercial products. And the second is capacity and skill building. The third direction of the, and one of the main pillars is development of applications and services for the Eurasian Common Development Goals and the last one is the partnership and management of promotion of international cooperation and sponsoring and end users. Thank you for your, thank you for your kind attention.
Well, Iman, thank you very much for for your presentation. I think it's uh, very interesting, and uh, I, I would like to, before before we give the floor to other panelists, ask you which is the stage of development of this project? Is had started? It's uh, it's already ongoing. It's uh, still uh, pending to start. Uh, indeed, uh, the process, uh, as I mentioned in my speech, the last resolution adopted in September on creation and the resolution advised to establish the Eurasian Connectivity Alliance. Uh, that means uh, the resolution was accepted one month before ago, and that's why we are going to start all preparation of issues for the project uh, from the next beginning of the year. But uh, a friend of mine who is focal point of the consortium of the, let me say, the first part of this project, it is, which we used to say the Trans-Eurasian Super Information Highway. And if you don't mind, Mr. Hassanov will give you this brief information on the creation of the consortium on, the, uh, on this part of the project. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Zaur and I'm representing the trans Eurasian Information Superhighway Project. <coughs> and thanks, my woman. Uh, the current stage, Olga, is following. In uh, December, you know, December uh, of this year, usually Azerbaijan conducts so-called Bakutel um, you know, Information Conference uh, on telecommunications. It's 19th annual conference, and we expect that all five operators of the TASIM project, Castranscom, uh, uh, Ross Telecom, uh, Turk Telecom, uh, China Telecom, and on Azerbaijani side, Azari Telecom, will be there to sign a memorandum of understanding. And after this phase, it's a very kind of uh, benchmark for us. After this phase, we will start the consultation on a uh, on a traffic policy, as example, as a business unit, which will be used. Uh, there are various uh, approaches to this issue, but pretty much, I would say that 90% of the consultations uh, have been conducted. We uh, hired some years ago a co-company to conduct the overall research and capacities uh, of the passing project. So we're in the right direction, and expect that from December. Uh, we will have a kind of this benchmark to move ahead and start real construction of the TASIM. That's great news. And I remember Bakutel, when we were in Baku, that was held side by side with the IGF meeting. So it was an impressive uh, conference. I, I recall it was really huge and very well attended. So I will give the floor to Fasil. I'm so sorry I misspelled your name before. And. Um, He's the NDP officer in, in, in Azerbaijan, and uh, please, Asif. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, prior, prior to going to talking about my points, I would actually like to uh, see if there are any questions in the audience regarding what is uh, the presentation that went done before. What about the participants? Is there any question? Okay. So, Talking regarding Eurocard, I would like to make a brief comment. Uh, just simply, what is a Eurocard? There was a huge and very really comprehensive presentation. Huge, uh, the, the thing is, what actually Eurocard is focusing on from the perspective of the UN is that, as you may know, when the, there are already international institutions that are tackling with these problems of digital gap, and the first, the biggest one is ITU. However, the thing is, to what extent actually it's sufficient? And the Eurocard's main perspective and the main target is uh, focusing on the, the making alliance of the countries who have shared the common problem. Because, of, well, uh, you can definitely see that what the digital gap is simply in and the single words is the Eurasia, like Asian countries, uh, the residents and, and the people around, them, that doesn't matter whether they live in a room, uh, regions of the country, or they live in uh, urban uh, locations, but they pay more, but they have a really low speed of internet. But in Europe, it's a vice versa. The major aim of the Eurocar is having the same and an equal access to internet, uh, starting from the Hong Kong and ending in Paris. And another thing is about Eurocar is uh, it not only focus on the digi uh, eradication of digital gap, as well as get a 
uh, provide the governmental level as well as uh, civil society level services, starting from the like pre writing of the strategies, uh, training of the staff, and remuneration of the uh, special uh, guests and uh, representatives from the country tackling their own problems. And so it has huge perspective. Some people can actually perceive it as a kind of junior ITU. Maybe some can even take in the same level of the ITU role. But in, if you look, have a look at the UN resolutions, you can find out that it's actually, it should be in close cooperation and close support of ITU. And uh, another thing is like, if there is a question of, uh, from the audience, we think that today's our open forum wasn't actually focusing on the Hiroka. Because definitely uh, the audience knows that we were the host country of the previous IGF in 2012, which was uh, quite successful and outstanding compared to other IGFs, not only because of the number of participants, but also the intense of the attendees at the workshops. And so uh, we'd like to, as actually was, we indicated in an email uh, to the, our guests here, that we're also initiating the initiative uh, to have a National Internet Governance Forum in December. And what is it actually? It's going to be conducted in the same week with the Bakutel, which is a well-known showcase in Azerbaijan that actually con it is conveying so far and annually. And the uh, participants' uh, re extent is quite enormous in the event. And the, the folks of National Internet Governance Forum will be that uh, so focusing on the uh, problems that Azerbaijan has in its own internet governance forum from the perspective of international expertise. So like you definitely know the IGFs, they mainly focus on global issues. They uh, try to tackle with the global challenges. And for instance, like today I'm quite sure that for last week there wasn't an issue regarding Indonesia and what kind of problems the Indonesia governance forum faces. It. So they're more focusing on uh, human rights issues that are actually are making the main challenge here in the workshop. They're also focusing on uh, more like uh, disabled people, how to help them, facilitate them to have the same access like uh, any other resident of this uh, country. And definitely uh, this uh, workshop will focus on uh, specifically what can be done to improve the international and as well as local internet governance forum in the region and Azerbaijan. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Are there questions so far for Fatih for Mariman from the audience? So I am um, give the floor to my friend Mohamed Turov from Russia. He works in the national CCTV.ru that by the way they were also very active uh, in the face of uh, IBM CCTLD. So I remember the Cyrillic issues and confusion, similarities about some characters. So, um, uh, it, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you could just uh, ask for a couple of extra minutes, because I believe that it's not that clear for the audience here uh, in this room as well as online uh, why this project originates in Eurasia, what Eurasia is about, and uh, why we need uh, this uh, super highway, uh, as well as our friends and. Uh, uh, colleagues. So let me start uh, with uh, just explaining to you that uh, we uh, uh, talk about one of the most complex regions in the world because uh, Eurasia basically it's uh, 12 in newly independent, in independent states uh, that uh, became independent in 1991 after the USSR collapsed. collapsed. And uh, we, we talked about the population of 400 million people basically so far missing on the internet governance map and on the internet map as well. So we talk about the countries, uh, some of uh, which benefited greatly from oil and gas uh, reserves, and these are Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, and Turkmenistan, but uh, the, uh, the rest, uh, Eight nations are still uh, struggling uh, as, as they face a lot of economic, social, environmental, whatever problems, including uh, challenges uh, which are you know, 
Vasif has just mentioned, uh, associated with a, a low penetration rate of the internet or even non-existence of the internet in many regions there, in many provinces there, and um, with a very uh, low access uh, to a broadband uh, and very high prices, given that the population's income is very low. So this project uh, uh, is uh, well, it aims to tackle the critical uh, challenge which uh, these nations face these days. And I believe that this is an absolutely new stage of uh, um, international cooperation in Eurasia. It's also a project uh, to build trust between uh, those uh, those nations which were uh, 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 parts of uh, the same Soviet empire, but then they gone independent, and because of that, uh, lost some kind of uh, mutual trust. And it's also interesting to see that uh, this project is, uh, well, we've heard a lot of discussions. So what, what is better, multilateral or multi-stakeholder approach to whatever challenges we face uh, these days? I believe this project um, is a unique combination of both approaches, and we can see multilateral uh, uh, cooperation between states and governments, as well as uh, multi-stakeholder, because we uh, do have uh, private businesses uh, contributed to this project. Also, um, I believe uh, this project highlights uh, the role of the state with S capitalized, uh, which is, I mean, from my perspective, as far as uh, this presentation, uh, is close to the ideal. So the government, uh, the state, uh, spearheads this project. Uh, it provides a capital investment, uh, a massive capital investment to, uh, to deliver this project. It also coordinates foreign policy so that to harmonize interests of different players in the region. Uh, imagine, we talk about, uh, I don't know how many thousand kilometers. <laughs> huh? <laughs> 11, 11,000 kilometers from China to Europe, so it's a kind of trans-Eurasian superhighway. So we talk actually about the, uh, uh, the replication <coughs> on an absolutely new level of, uh, uh, I guess you remember some of you, of the medieval Silk Way when caravans were going uh, a month, uh, for months and months from China to Europe and the Arabic countries. So, uh, and now it's, it, it will be a matter of uh, seconds, or milliseconds. Uh, so, uh, the government is also keen, uh, again, decapitalized, uh, to shape the market environment, uh, to provide uh, whatever services at affordable prices on a competitive basis, and most importantly, I mean, as far as we talk about the internet for development, most importantly, the government uh, is keen uh, to ensure spillover effects, of which I uh, just uh, talked about um, uh, briefly, that is uh, a booming supplier and consumer industries. This is quite understandable. This our uh, ambitious project will require a lot of joint effort uh, from whatever businesses, not necessarily uh, internet companies only. Um, employment, this is a critical issue. I guess our, our friends from Africa would uh, certainly appreciate it. So there will be employment, um, you know, bolstering human capacity. This is also important because when the USSR collapsed, the former educational system collapsed together with the country. And still, some Eurasian nations face huge challenges in terms of uh, secondary to, to, to let alone higher education. So, and the uh, building information society, which uh, in turn uh, will provide a strong, um, a strong, uh, I would say, uh, impetus to the uh, uh, growing of the civil society and uh, in its proper interaction with the government structure. So I believe this um, this project uh, has a very bright future, and we are very happy that uh, Russians uh, participate in that. I mean, our Ross Telecom company, uh, and as to the. Uh, uh, from, uh, as to the upcoming event in Baku, we are greatly looking forward to this. And, uh, well, I just wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Leonid. And uh, any comments so far from the audience? Uh, do you have a mic over there? Thank you. Please, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
My name is uh, Abu Bakr Karasan. I'm coming from Tanzania. And uh, I'm the executive director of the Union of Tanzania Press Club, which is a media organization. Uh, and it happens to be the secretariat of the National Internet Governance Forum in our country. And we are highly privileged here because I am with my colleague who happens to be the chairman of that steering committee which is uh, organizing for the National Internet Governance Forum. Uh, my take on this uh, meeting today, uh, I would like to um, get some information from you on the formation of this secretariat, which is uh, uh, organizing for you a National Internet uh, Governance Forum. What is the role of the media and uh, the civil society because when I read this paper here, it tells me as if uh, this uh, uh, committee is comprised of the state part. What about the role of the non-state actors in organization of the National Internet Governance Forum? Mm -hmm. And uh, w when I read the topics which you are going to discuss at the level of the National Internet Governance Forum, there is this issue of cyber security, uh, which happens to be quite a very big problem, not only in, in, in your country, but I think uh, in most of the countries uh, in the world, especially on how you can come up with a cyber uh, security law, how to enact laws that will govern cyber security. And uh, we have in our country, a highly experienced lawyer who knows these uh, issues of cyber security and he has uh, participated in many international forums and we could be very happy if you would invite this person to participate in this uh, National Internet Governance Forum in your country so that you could learn or you could share information uh, with him. So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me and my colleague to come here and uh, we would like to share much on how we are organizing our national internet governance forum because in our country uh, we have done this since uh, 2008 so we have quite a vast experience on how to organize uh, internet governance forums uh, we'll be very happy to share with you our experience thank you very much Thank you to our friend from Tanzania. And uh, would you like to add any comments, your colleague? Would you like to add something? Uh, I'm Kenneth Simbaya. I'm the president of Union of Tanzania Press Club. Uh, just like uh, what Abakari has said, probably my comment will be best uh, suit at the middle or at the end because. Uh, so far, so good. We, I, I kind of haven't heard like the process, the process which Azerbaijan is going through in preparing this uh, National Internet Governance Forum. Bearing in mind, this is uh, uh, we are close to December now. Uh, it's, it's likely or hopefully that uh, already there is a process which uh, Azerbaijan have already undergone. Now, if I had the process which has been taken so far, I'll be in a better position to, to see what I'm learning or what I can contribute in terms of refining or improving or uh, inputting to, to, into the process. Thank you. Thank you. Any reactions from the floor to our colleagues from Tanzania? Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, thank you for your very powerful uh, comments and also uh, suggestions regarding the National Internet Governance Forum. So definitely you have more practice and experience compared to us because we are actually initiating to launch the first one. And definitely we enough after the meeting, I need to the contact details of the person that we definitely uh, would like to see in December in Azerbaijan. Uh, regarding the topics, uh, so even so we have enough time, like let's say in one and a half months, uh, that these topics are actually what we're thinking. 
that the people can talk about in the forum. But as you have already seen in RGF here and in this week, uh, in most of the workshop, the titles were different, the content was irrelevant. And that actually we are trying to avoid in this meeting. We try to know uh, what kind of topics we need to really focus on, and also we made it more like case study of Azerbaijan. Because when you have a specific country, uh, it's very difficult to uh, refrain from the specific issues or to get, uh, take uh, the challenges of global uh, internet society back to the agenda. So uh, regarding cybersecurity that you mentioned, that why we put cybersecurity to the agenda is, uh, as you may know, in December, in the same week, uh, there will be UN, one of the huge UN, UN events on cybersecurity in Azerbaijan. And Regarding that event, definitely there will be well-known and well-known expert experience uh, scholars in this point and as well as uh, well-known guests. And so what we're actually intending to do to try to involve them to today's meeting is about in order to share their experience what kind of specific uh, stuff should be commenced in order to uh, have and tackle the cyber security issues. But the problem that we had that you asked the question about initially that should we actually focus on the local audience or rather on the regional audience because internet is the thing that you can't put a specific borders. It always blur and it's really difficult to see the precise what kind of lines they have. So we need to avoid it. We're, we're just actually focusing on to make this first initiative because in most of the regional countries they do have this annually. Like Russia they have RIGF and since then you definitely had it for a year. In Australia I know that they have the last two years and they had a recent meeting in one and two weeks ago. And what's our main focus is actually to make society to be aware of what actually is going on in, and how the government is involved in the internet society of the country. So this uh, motto even is that internet as an engine for regional growth and advancement. So starting with Azerbaijan, we're actually trying to have at the next meeting and we need areas of the country, we're starting from the capital and trying to focus on what actual problems first Azerbaijan has and then what the uh, regions of the country or the Alpine regions they do have. Uh, but in anything that I'd like to add in the end, definitely the topics can cover all the issues of the internet. But we're trying to cover the issues that we're facing in Azerbaijan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fatih. And yes, please, you mm -hmm. We have been once part of the same, uh, parts of the same country, of the same big country. We still face, and um, we've faced uh, similar challenges. So let me just add, I mean, building on uh, our experience, I mean, in Russia. So I believe your question is absolutely relevant. Uh, uh, we have to date, uh, we've got uh, four IGFs. And indeed, the media, are still underrepresented at our events. Although we send up, a, you know, a bunch of invitations uh, to the uh, national, <coughs> I'm sorry, national media, including printed and uh, electronic, and what we found out that the turnout effect was really uh, small. Uh, I would attribute this uh, to a very low awareness, as was it for uh, among journalists, what the internet governance is about. It's not still an issue for them, because one of them claimed quite wittingly that, okay, if I have a water leakage, water supply leakage in my house, then I would call a plumber. Why should I care when the internet uh, is running in my apartment? Everything is fine. I don't, I, I don't need to care of the internet governance. So we believe, as well as our other friends, is that uh, one of the prime uh, objectives of such events is not only to raise awareness but to educate people including by the way especially as I've already mentioned given all the educational challenges in the uh, post-Soviet states including the academics. Well I must say that our colleagues in Azerbaijan are well, so took a lead in this um, effort because they just uh, established an ICT university. I mean an educational institution, uh, a dedicated uh, um, um, uh, educational institution in their country. But uh, these things are still missing in uh, my country. So um, educational awareness raising, that's what we uh, put an emphasis on in our effort. And let me also mention that for a country as huge as Russia, we so far have managed to draw only 500 participants. 
you know, Russia uh, uh, occupies a part of uh, Europe and a part of Asia. So we have managed to expand our outreach only to the natural war between Europe and Asia because still for some people it's very costly to come over to Moscow from Siberia. But I would easily imagine that some of them would be able to come to Baku, for example, because we still have visa, uh, we, we will have visa waiver regime. So it would be much easier to come to Baku rather than to Moscow, much cheaper. So uh, it is a very important issue. Plus, you know, for uh, Baku to be a kind of natural nucleus for uh, for a, a part, a great part, of a great part of Eurasia, is that uh, not only do uh, some nations in Eurasia share uh, the uh, 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 the uh, uh, well, still uh, the command of uh, the Russian language, but they are also united. Uh, by uh, some kind of uh, Turkish root, I mean, languages. So they can easily understand each other even without mastering the Russian language. So it's also important. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Leonid. Norman, you want to add something? Yes. Uh, regarding, I would like to bring your current notice that regarding uh, as a follow up of the IGF, which we have hosted the last year in Baku, in Azerbaijan. As a follow-up, uh, we decided to conduct, the, let's say, the first national, maybe it could be later the regional IGF. And the second issue is for that, as a result of this event, uh, we decided to conduct a workshop on e-participation. Uh, the e-participation workshop on empowering the people through the ICT in decision-making process. And taking this opportunity, I would like also to uh, invite the participants in Baku. Uh, there will be uh, many events in December, first week of December, as a friend of mine has already indicated. The first one is the Exhibition International Con uh, Conference, which we used to call the Baku Tour. And the second event will be the uh, National and Regional Internet Governance Forum. And the third one, there will be, as Vasif has already mentioned, the International Conference on Cybersecurity, which is the used to the cybersecurity topic, which used to be very popular among nowadays as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have some comments from the floor. Do we have a mic over there? Uh, thank you. Could you say in your name and, and your information? Hi, I'm, I'm Mike Harris from Index on Censorship. Um, the government of Azerbaijan certainly has a very progressive attitude towards the internet. It's the first country in the world to ever release the results of an election, presidential election, on the internet a day before voting had even taken place, which is certainly testament to a very different attitude to the internet that, that, that's normal in democracies. Um, we had the IGF in Azerbaijan last, uh, last year. It's a real shame that when the world's community and civil society came together in Baku, the government of Azerbaijan, instead of taking a message that an open and pluralistic internet is good for business, is good for your citizens, is good for democracy, took the opposite lesson. And in the last year there's been uh, systematic detention, systematic arrests, harassment and victimisation of bloggers and journalists. The government has tightened the law. There has been an increased punishment for criminal defamation online. And in fact, instead of embracing the internet and saying, look, plurality is here to stay, we've learnt lessons from the Arab Spring, we see how the internet is good and possibly good for our country, the government of Azerbaijan instead is becoming more draconian, is limiting the space for freedom of expression. And I think it's a real shame that the IGF, uh, that the IGF didn't use its uh, didn't use the leeway it had, didn't use the leverage it had to make sure that the government of Azerbaijan stopped with the promises it made in Baku and it made specific promises on what it would do to protect internet freedom. It has absolutely failed to implement them. And the clampdown on civil society will not be ignored by people across the world. Um, do we have reactions from the floor? Uh, first, I would like to say that all these things are processes, not moments. Just a personal reflection on that. Norma? Um, and I would like to briefly comment, uh, first of all, I would like to thank 
for the comment. Uh, just very briefly, let me disagree with you, the first of all, because if I don't know if you have personally participated in the last IGF in Baku, yeah, yes, you did. Okay. And if you did participate in, in Baku in IGF, you could see how the internet is free and the freedom of speech of, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, world you have this kind of the information, but as a matter of fact, uh, we could see the, how internet and the freedom of speech is free in Azerbaijan and the social media all inclusive their aspects. This is the first remark. And the second issue, I would like just to bring your kind notice that the topic of the today's session is just regarding the Euro Asian Connectivity Alliance, regarding the international project, which is not only the important for the Republic of Azerbaijan, which is very important for the whole region for the Asia and for the Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Naliman. I think we have another question from you. Could you say me an affiliation, please? Thank you, my name is Zainov. I'm Azerbaijani NGO representative. I have two questions. One question about uh, who participate from local civil society in national <coughs> uh, internet governance forum. Uh, you mean the last year? In Azerbaijan? You mean the last year, yeah? No, no, yeah. Ah. For, this, uh, for this workshop. And which, uh, who made the decision to organize this? Uh, you mean in terms of participation today, right now, or in the IGF which has hosted the last year? No, I'm speaking about uh, national IGF forum, which we plan to organize in the December. December. Okay, then. And who? local participation and uh, I'm also agree with my colleague from Index of Censorship because uh, internet is not only technical <laughs> issue, it is also based from human factor and if for example you talk for this multinational project your region connective alliance. But for example, when one country blocked internet, for example, <coughs> and other countries, internet users also have problem. You remember problem with this, uh, Russia and Georgia, when Georgia blocked one web resources, in other, but in other neighbor country, internet users don't have enough access to any online website. But, uh, and also I want to speak about human rights in Azerbaijan. But after IG, we have lots of violations against uh, all our <coughs> dissidents. Now we have three bloggers, nine journalists, two human rights defenders in prison. And what do you think? It's normal when you talk for, yes, Azerbaijan have free internet, but other stakeholders like me told for no, we have imprisoned journalists, we have bloggers in prison which are arrested with different fake criminal cases. How is it possible to have free internet if we don't have real freedom of expression in Azerbaijan? Thank you. Uh, I will be very brief to your comments. Thank you for your comments. The first comment regarding the participation of the civil society in the upcoming events which will be scheduled to be conducted in December in Baku. The thing is that since the national and the regional IGF is a follow-up uh, as a country and as a region, since it's an uh, integral part of the global IGF, there will be no any kind of the restrictions which you are thinking about it. The civil society, private sector, governments, all participants which would like to have participate are most welcome. There is just a website you need just register as we used to have the last eight years for the global IGF. That's very simple. Just you have to go to the website, register and 
come and take your badge and participate in the all sessions which are scheduled. The, the other issue which we have already reminded to the gentleman which has raised the issue, as I mentioned, uh, I'm totally disagree with that. There is, I could easily say that there is a no, as you mentioned, there is no human, uh, there is no concrete human right violation or there is a, there is a concrete the freedom of speech. Maybe you disagree with me, but this is very natural because when two, let me say, the parts did you find the common language in one sentence, it means none of them will agree with each other. But I am still with my point, with my sense that I disagree and there is no use to agree with you. And uh, the, um, I think uh, Leonid and Fasil. Let me compliment on what just uh, Norman said. Well, uh, my favorite line from uh, someone uh, likes it more hot or something like that was, nobody's perfect. That's number one. That's my usual response. Second, we should not forget that we've got a long, long story of communist rule. And that record cannot be erased that easily. We still bear great, well, uh, you would agree or disagree with me. I am a former member of the Communist Party, by the way, of the Soviet Union. Imagine this? Okay, anyway, so uh, 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 let me tell you what. These uh, uh, two decades, or uh, nearly three decades of transition, uh, were the hardest time in our lives. It's not that, well, sometimes it's easy to do a major uh, overhaul with the economy. It's not that easy to change the mindset, not only for the government, but for the people on the street. So it's not that easy to learn the lessons of the full-fledged democracy and the rules, how to express yourselves. Like, you can uh, reprimand me for what's happened in Moscow recently. And by the way, it involved those people from Azerbaijan who live in Moscow. Once a Moscow uh, guy was stabbed into his back allegedly by Azerbaijan, there was a riot against Azeris. So, now, shall I just be at odds with Naaman because of that? Or rather, we should do something about that using media to sort of educate people and to explain to them that, well, democracy is not about uh, writing and looting local Azeri stores. But again, it takes time because uh, pensions are there. So we're still in that process of transition. Democracy is a very fragile thing. And it's so easy to sort of break it once and for all. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't urge you to just uh, do it, to double think or to rethink. Okay, I, I mean, uh, uh, I'm dying for your for your stance. I mean, for, for your right to have this stance. But you can also hear us. So uh, what I mean at the moment, we are still uh, in a very uh, kind of uh, process of transition. So please do understand it. And it's not that easy to impose democracy from the top or just to learn that lesson that fast as communists would think, Marx and Lenin. Again, it takes time. And speaking of the freedom of the internet, it's a very interesting issue. I would again urge you, if you try not to just read the uh, publications on the internet, rather, if you master uh, uh, Russian or um, uh, Azari, try to read what people comment on this. And you will see uh, a freedom of speech, unbelievable freedom of speech, which I personally would love to limit because there are so many obscenities there. But again, I, I'm dying for their right to express themselves, but there should be some limits at the same time, believe me. Especially when it comes to some very specific uh, uh, concepts, uh, you know, we, we, we can talk about at length at some other sessions, like, you know, protecting children online, you know, uh, kind of uh, netiquette and stuff like that. Just a, a very quick comment. Thank you, Leonid. Uh, I think we have Fatih. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your question. Uh, actually, questions because uh, there were like several issues, and thank you, friend, for the question. It's definitely, uh, it's 
uh, first of all, it's out of my competence to make any comment on behalf of the government of Azerbaijan, but what I'd like to tell as international experts, uh, for someone standing from that side, as a, first of all, uh, regarding the uh, National Summer Gardens Forum, you can, uh, there's a website, nigf.az, even now you can just uh, link in and just have the participation uh, link that's blinking, so it's really easy. Uh, another point regarding the uh, the issue that problems were during the previous IGF. Uh, first of all, uh, there was any precedent that Azerbaijan had uh, conducted such a huge event in, uh, in Azerbaijan. Actually, the expectance was that there would be like 700 or 800 participants, but instead there were like 1,000 and 600 or eight uh, participants. There were the people who were complaining about food, they were complaining about the, uh, the access to the internet and so forth. But actually, the, another, the problem was that there were like more than uh, more than ten days that was that was uh, actually uh, expected. Uh, regarding the issue that the uh, the how the human rights issues can be impediment uh, for the Eurasian Connectivity Alliance, what I actually can briefly say that uh, it all definitely know that we were universal human rights charter. And in the international relations, there's a, a two approach to this. It's universalist and relativist. And what's actually this is, universalist are the people are actually perceiving all the points and the uh, ideas of the universal human charge at all. But the relativists are the people who are picking it. They have a picking some rights. So that actually goes issue of community, how community itself sees. And in Asia, not uh, in like in Azerbaijan only, in Asian countries, you definitely see that there is no individualism. They're talking about community. Like you look at the Asia, like in China, for instance, like uh, the, uh, uh, the Confucian idea is that you have to respect elderly, the oldest stable of families. And look to the Indonesia, most of the candidates, there's the uh, hugest uh, population in the world of the Muslim population, and there's 242 million people living here. And if you ask anyone who's in, uh, when you leave the room, the, the local people, indigenous people, they have this kind of cultural rights, even when they're writing, the quite, quite similar, that you see that they uh, don't have their own right to choose their uh, future partner, it comes from the issue of community. So, what the perspective, when you do look to the problems, of the other issue. You have to look for the, uh, first of all, what kind of community we're talking about. Did the community have it before, or are they trying to have it, and how, to what extent actually community's reaction is. And uh, then the last point about how actually uh, the countries have no problem to be part of the alliance. Well, that's simply is actually, that's alliance for. Alliance is for the people to avoid from this problem and to uh, go on and uh, tackle with these impediments that actually there is. And digital gap as a kind of concept can be described as a lack of internet speed as well as a lack of access. So that actually alliance will fight for. The, so far the 53 countries already support the alliance, but in a way that shows uh, supporting the resolutions. And instead, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that it's this list encompassing most of the Western countries as well as the Asian countries. And that's a big plus. Thank you. We have two comments from the floor, but uh, from the audience. But I think Ayman wants to add a question, uh, sentence. Uh, yeah, I'll be very brief. Uh, just to summarize what I have already said, that uh, there is a concrete the progress. Just I would like to say the progress of ICT sector, and since we are the leader in the region, I mean, is a vital proof of internet freedom, which means there is no human rights violation at all. Since if you look just uh, look the figures of the ICT. I mean, and the progress of the ICT in the sphere of ICT, which has we did the within one year. I mean, they, we have already established the IT university, then launching of the satellite, and uh, if you are speaking about the internet freedom, if you see look at the internet penetration rate, uh, for the example for the last year, and then mobile international penetration and the using the internet for from the mobile devices could easily show the, how the internet freedom is indeed in Azerbaijan and it gives us a clear picture on that. Thank you. Thanks, Nani Man. We have comments from two, two comments from the, the audience. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Zahar and I'm from uh, Passim Project once again. But regarding your question, I mean, and uh, friend over there, the fundamental problem, fundamental problem in a nutshell, is that there is a no unique approach to how to deal with this kind of situation. If someone comes and posts derogatory statements, calls for kind of actions which is, uh, can one way or other damage the public safety, 
So that, that's the government what should do, uh, take some action. I don't, I don't understand why, why you're smiling, because it was in the United States, and I know it's personally, it was very much in the press, that there were a couple of cases when young men posted the uh, announcement, kind of announcement, who's going to come to school, okay. who's going to kill this one, that one, his teacher, he was arrested. There were many, many cases in Europe. Take the riots in London. What yeah. happened there? Could the Facebook was monitoring. Could we please, we, we are running out of time. Not, not just, I don't understand this approach when they try to single out the country. Okay. I'm telling you, go, go and single out other countries. Very really close. Okay. Okay. Guys, uh, my, my statement to you, coffee, my statement to you will be, don't uh, damage the reputation of the institution which you respect. Those people in Azerbaijan perfectly understand what's your mission. Thanks a lot. Gentlemen, we don't have much time. We have to wrap up. Uh, uh, Slava has to fly. No, would, you, would you be so kind? Because Slava is waiting to talk uh, for a while. Madam Chair, thank you very much. And my name is uh, Slava Cherkasov. I'm from uh, New York United Nations. And uh, I have a few comments, if you would mind, just very yeah. briefly. Okay, the first one I just used to work for DPI, the public public information, and we, I'm talking about like media, where we have a joke, if a uh, dog bites a man, it's not a news. But if man bites a dog, this is a big news. What I'm talking about, so that, that um, uh, for the many years, you see that we also try to bring media and bring the issue of internet governance to media. And uh, I believe so that what we're missing in our relationship with media, so that, that we just let them know, you know, like regular media alert. And it's not interesting for media. So that I believe maybe what is recommended, especially on the regional, national level, just to have some um, discussion with the media chiefs and the heads of the offices to see what kind of, you know, of interest, what, what kind of information they would like to get in advance. Because I'm pretty much sure that there's a number of the workshops and a number of the, you know, the discussions that might be interesting for them. But given that they have no idea, besides the general statement about what this IGF forum or what is the national forum agenda is, they don't have this, you know, this specific so that they, they can, you know, that really pay attention to this. Second one, in terms of this, uh, um, you know, the project initiative. So that my, um, I would say, um, comments is that we need to preserve this fundamental of Internet. So that to prevent is the defragmentation. So that in this respect, I believe so that this is a two type of the things. So the first one is technological one. So that, of course, so that as much as possible, we provide this uh, infrastructure and, you know, that, and uh, try to connect, you know, that all the countries together is extremely important initiative so that, and uh, indeed it uh, helps countries to work together. On the other hand, of course, so that we have this comment so that, that uh, it should not create the defragmentation of the Internet. And with this respect, the second element, as we call the content, because actually the hardware is the hardware, so that, but what is the internet famous is the content. So the, the flow of the content, the freedom of the content, developing of the content, and as well as the exchange of the content, this is the extremely important uh, element. And I believe so that with this respect, uh, given that the project on the stage formulation, so that this issue take into consideration, and of course, so that given that internet governance is a unique, as a multi-stakeholder platform, that we feel that the future step of the project implementation to be done, you know, that in this consensus of the discussion with by various uh, stakeholders. And just only one last comment, which I would like also to talk about the procedures of the internet governance forum itself. So, but what I would like, you know, that to bring to attention to the all participants, you know, that we have a long and very successful story of the Internet Governance Forums all around the world, which was based on the fundamental uh, issue of uh, the respect, dignity to the participants, and as well the multi-stakeholder platform. So that it will be very much appreciated at the participants, you know, that of the all these forums will respect to each other 
and follow this fundamental um, agreement, which is what create this successful platform. And, uh, you know, that we afraid from the accusing, especially with the names, you know, that with the specific organizations, because so that we consider that uh, the success of this forum was based on the bringing the issues, not bringing the names on the table. And this is what the, uh, actually demonstrating the acceptance of the international community on the own level and also drive uh, this uh, international forum forward with a more and more respect and with a more and more participation. So therefore, I just really would like to appreciate that not only this year, but in the future, so that the dignity, respect, and uh, not converting this uh, forum into the political criticism and uh, uh, mutual uh, accusations. So that I very much appreciate if, you know, that this fundamental principle uh, that will be awarded. Prevail. Thank you, Slava. And uh, I think we have to wrap up. If it's short, that, that's okay. Would you go ahead? Thank you, Madam Chair. It might be not be short, but important. I, I, I'm, I have no okay. doubt. I just I not, 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 not alone because we have to okay. move the Thank you. I wanted to say that uh, um, if we lose focus, then Azerbaijan is not going to benefit from our presence here. There are, there are many ways of handling issues. My approach has always been acknowledging what is working while, I mean, taking uh, my take off from what is working, celebrating the literal wins, at the same time uh, uh, acknowledging the gaps. As for me, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, it's important uh, that uh, we focus, we take the history of Azerbaijan, we see a lot of things that, uh, which are positive and those positive things will give us energy to move forward because if we assume that nothing is working, the approach will be different but at the same time if we note what is working and take off from there, it will give us the morale to move forward at the same time filling the gaps which are existing. For me, the title itself is very, very important. It says Internet as an engine for regional growth and advancement. Such issues can be addressed even during those forums in terms of like how do we want the Internet to benefit the regional and everything. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and please forgive my limited English. I, I never meant that your comment was not important. I just meant that we need to take uh, uh, be aware of the time. Uh, uh, so, Chair, should we make a final comment? Is it? Okay. So, first of all, I mean, uh, thank you all for your comments and as well as for your participation. I want to just uh, wrap up all the following because we have to head to a closing ceremony, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, starting uh, with a thing that we, what was actually the focus of the uh, open forum today? First of all, open forum, which is different from the workshops, is that we don't have specific agenda or title. It's all about actually talking about several issues from the perspective of the one thing. So I hope we will succeed actually in our point. Regarding the order of wrapping up, I'm quite so sure that if you ask other uh, uh, participants here, like uh, Jonathan from Argentina, who's a brilliant guy in this ICT, as well as the Kassim of Afghanistan, they do have this problem. Any country has a kind of problem in their uh, internet. No one is perfect, in the, as Leonid mentioned, but also I guess uh, no one will be perfect. Because there is no perfection uh, to reach at all, because no one can actually define it. So, uh, in the case, back in going back to the issue, I, I would like to uh, actually to front this discussion in the next uh, several months, and what's going to be conducted during the next phase, National Internet Governance Forum. I guess that means we will have intense discussions there, because these are the points actually should be discussed in national forums. Definitely the African uh, or the Asian participants here, they are aware of this problem, but the local people are more aware. So therefore the national tennis government what is for. Therefore, taking in the last chance, I would like to invite you all. You all have the booklets and we have some uh, uh, already uh, left on the table so you can uh, 
You're most welcome to take one, and she has, has all uh, comprehensive information in National Tennis Governance Forum in December, first week, as well as to the Cyber Security Conference of the UN, and plus uh, we will have a workshop on e-participation, and uh, as well as all in all to invite you all into Azerbaijan. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Hope to see you soon. I would like just to make a, a final comment in this beautiful brochure. There's the beauty of this session and the project. And the first page of the project, six, more than 6,000 um, um, interconnection through fiber, and in the second stage, almost 20,000 kilometers. That's the beauty, and that will change the life of hundreds of millions of people. So thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much.